Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Zoe Haimovich, and I'm from Hi Bob. It's so great to have you all join us today. And we're going to take another minute to give all of you attendees a chance to get dialed in before we get started. Um, we'd love to hear from you. So if you can enter your name, organization, and where you're located in the QA tab, that would be great. So we're waiting for everybody to join. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? I hope so. Please make a sign that you do, that you can. Everybody can hear me, so I'm going to start. And hi, everyone. Excited to be here with Sharon from Fiverr, the CHRO of Fiverr. I'm going to start by telling you a few facts about HiBob. Um, HiBob is the company behind Bob, which is a modern, easy-to-use people management suite designed for the way people work today, globally, remotely, and collaboratively. And I'm excited to be here to share with you our customers, our prospects, um, and everyone that joined this webinar to tell you about the research we did about the um, filling the talent gap during this great resignation. In, in, with me today is Sharon Steiner, the CHRO of Fiverr, who did this research with us together. And um, I'll let Sharon introduce herself. Sharon. Hello, hi everybody, very nice to be here. I'm Sharon, I'm CHRO of Fiverr with Fiverr 10 years. By the way, tomorrow Fiverr is celebrating our 12th birthday. Um, I joined Fiverr when we were about 20 employees, now we are hitting the 1000 globally. Uh, Fiverr is a marketplace for freelancers. Uh, uh, providing digital services, and I'm um, happy to be here to discuss and speak. Thank you, Sharon. So I'd like to talk about the great resignation versus the background to what's happening. Um, and um, I'll just throw out a few facts that everybody's been uh, covering and uh, paying attention to in the market, is that um, and these three words have um, shaped the world of work. I mean, after COVID-19 um, started dying off and after the whole issues we went through during 2020, 2021 hit us with the whole idea of the great resignation. And many organizations have seen record turnover since April, 2021. If um, in the US alone, 4 million people quit their jobs um, it was the highest turnover in 20 years in April. And then in August, the next number was 4.3 million people. And then in November, it was up to 4.5 with prediction of more to come. As people across all industries consider their next move, it's not getting any slower. And um, we realize that some turnover is healthy. The great resignation uh, is um, blindsiding companies and they're not attuned to the main motivations driving this shift. And HR leaders need to understand why are people quitting and what are they looking for instead? It seems like everybody decided to realign or rethink their careers during 2020. And um, the decisions are being made, were being made in 2021. 
Accepting the fact that turnover will always happen, but organizations want to retain their top performance and talent. So we know it's going to happen, but how much is going to happen? And how, what do we need to do to, this, to deal with it? So we, we did a research together, um, Fiverr and us, where we spoke to and interviewed 1,000 um, leaders um, 500 HR leaders and 500 hiring managers, people that hire are hiring for jobs during 2021, the last quarter of 2021 and the beginning of 2022. And we wanted to see um, what are they seeing, why, and what do they what do they think is happening? So the first question we asked them is, why do you think people are leaving their jobs now more than ever? And this is the answers from the whole sample, which means the HR leaders and the hiring managers together. And you can see that they're saying, we want more flexibility. It seems like any company today um, just saying, you know, let's go back to the way things were five days a week um, at the office, nine to five, whichever way you used to work, we're going back to that. People do not accept that anymore. So the great resignation, the first big issue for people is they expect more flexibility. The second point they're saying is better pay. Yes, people are realizing that there's opportunities out there. Because people are changing industries, because people are realigning their life, a lot of people see opportunities in going to another place where they can get better pay, a higher title, they can great create change for themselves, they want to change professions, and you can see that it's all over the place. It's like it starts with flexibility, and then we can see that uh, about a third of the people are looking for different solutions for different pain points, whether it's better pay and higher title, whether it's changing professions, relocation, and even a 22%, which is very big, a choosing to retire. And when they say choosing to retire, they're actually saying um, retiring earlier. Okay, whereas um, we can see that there's a whole gap there of people aged um, between 58, 65 that are saying, you know what, I've done enough. I can retire early with what I have. Because this is what happened during COVID and the great resignation. People are rethinking what they want to do. We did look at, it, at things by industry where we said to ourselves, well, is it the same everywhere? Is it for every industry, for every profession? So no, it's not the same. Um, there's different reasons in different industries and we need to pay attention to that. For example, everybody in the people in architecture, engineering, building, these type of, uh, of um, professions, they know this is an opportunity for them to get promoted to a higher title um, and higher pay. But people in arts and culture, that you can see that their issues are relocation or are better pay, or they want to just become freelancers. They don't want to be connected to a specific place. So in our research, we found that the answers different, differ between um, professions and industries. Not everybody has the same issues. It's obvious that you can see that in travel and transport, you know, after what they've been through, in um, um, 2020 and 2021, they're looking at changing professions, okay? 34% are saying changing professions and other are thinking of um, changing industries. So there's all kinds of reasons and we, we shouldn't get blindsided thinking that everybody comes from the same reason. So when, we, when an employee is showing us um, reasons for leaving, we have to understand that everybody has a different, a different way of looking at it um, and it's very personal. The, the other thing, we looked at company sizes and we wanted to show that there's a bit of a difference where people are working. If people are working for a medium-sized companies, which is about 51 to 1,000 employees versus a large, a very large company, more than 1,000. And you can see that um, everybody's saying they're leaving because they want more flexibility. It's the same 30%. But you can see that with, with bigger companies, more people are leaving to become freelancers, like 28% versus 20% for medium-sized companies. It totally makes sense to me. Somebody working for a huge corporation, you know, they've, they've um, had a nice career, and they believe that they can use this professional knowledge and become a freelancer. It makes sense. 
it totally makes sense that more of them are doing so. And you're always, we are also seeing better pay, higher title, but I'm just trying to see the differences. Okay, so you can see that people like um, in big companies are saying, hey, I want to relocate, so I'm going to leave. So that's 26%. So um, there's minor differences between people in mid-sized companies and the bigger companies. Again, this can be addressed when you're, uh, when you're uh, um, trying to retain your employees. If we look at job title levels leaving, you know, we thought going into this that it's the junior level people, entry level people that are leaving. And actually, we see that both um, HR leaders and hiring managers are realizing that um, mid-level managers, okay, hiring managers are saying um, uh, that, and HR leaders are saying that 50% of the people leaving are mid-level managers. And you can see that hiring managers are saying only 26% are mid-level, and they're saying 44% are director level, manager and director level. So we can see that the great resignation, it's not just about junior people leaving, it's about mid-level people and manager director level people leaving, changing industries, um, changing their life, changing what they want to do, looking for a better opportunity. And if you think about a manager leaving and a director leaving, they're leaving a whole team. So this is a bigger productivity issue. It's a bigger effectivity issue. So we need to make sure that um, we, we understand who really is leaving. And it is if it is the managers and directors, we need to make sure that we know that onboarding a new one, replacing a new one is going to take longer and there's going to be effects of a manager or a, or a director leaving on the whole company because they're probably going to have a team under them. Um, when we looked at by age group, it corresponds with the, um, with the titles because you can see that um, um, HR leaders are saying that age group leaving are between 36 and 45, 61%. Okay, and then um, they're saying 16% are between the ages of 41 and 55. And you can see that hiring managers are saying 50% are between the ages of 36 and 45, and 31% are between the ages of 46 and 55. So what we're seeing is that even the older group of professionals and more experienced and more senior, 46 to 55, are even them, even them are choosing to leave. And, uh, and the hiring manager is seeing even a worse situation in their perspective. Okay, so um, that means that um, we're definitely um, looking for managers to replace managers, and that's a long hiring process. Um, the impact of people leaving, we asked how much of a challenge, if at all, is employee turnover to your team's productivity. And we can see that there's a big difference between the different departments. Overall, okay, 42% said that it, the turnover has low impact on productivity, and only 58% said that turnover has high impact. Um, the answers were one to five, but I decided to put it in two levels so it's easier to see the differences and focus on the issue. When you look at marketing and advertising profession, you can see that turnover has a high impact on productivity. 73% is what people feel, okay? And so it's very similar in product and engineering, whereas in IT, they don't think it's as bad, okay? They say they can keep going. 59% only say it's high impact on productivity. And... Um, and the um, finance and accounting teams are also saying 56%. But still, at least half are saying it has a high impact on their productivity because when people leave, there is an effect on the people that stay. There's a talent gap. There is a skill gap. It's affecting their productivity. So everybody realizes this is not a fun situation. Okay. The negative impl impact of employee turnover, we said, what is the negative impact? So the HR leaders were telling us, okay, we incur extra costs to onboard and train new employees, 34%. There is a skill gap created, 37%. There are employees that are still with the company have lower morale. When, you're, when people are leaving your company, it affects how you think 
you know, should I stay here? Should I not? You know, um, am I doing more work than before? It has a it has a bad impact on the morale of the people that are staying. The company employs fewer veteran employees and camaraderie is decreased. People that knew each other don't know each other anymore. Turnover has many effects. Um, after employees leave, we have a hard time finding new employees to replace them. So not only is there a situation where we have to deal with the uh, morale of people staying after other people leave, we have a hard time filling the gap. And while we search for new employees, um, existing employees suffer from extra workload and increased trust. So we can see that there's a lot of negative impact on turnover and everybody wants to reduce that. Okay, especially with the people we care about, that we want them to stay, and that they're high performers, and we want to keep the company, company, the employees happy and productive. So all of these things are definitely a major stress to them. Um, we also asked, what is the average time to fill a position? And we can see that HR leaders are saying um, it takes about five months, 4.87. And hiring managers are saying it takes about six months. And I'm, I was thinking, I also asked Sharon, why is there a difference between what hiring managers are thinking and what HR leaders are thinking? Um, Sharon, do you have yeah. an idea about this? Yeah, because um, I think that uh, the hiring manager, he includes uh, uh, the, the onboarding uh, period of time. Uh, and the, he, he looks at the filling the day the new employee uh, begins to perform. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, uh, that's what I think. I mean, if it takes like a four month or a five month hiring, he adds the one month or one and a half month until the new employee uh, or manager on board um, and begins to, to perform. Uh, a month is uh, a good number. <laughs> Sometimes it takes even more. Uh, that's yeah. why uh, we need to create uh, more effective onboarding plans. But this is for later on. If yeah, we, totally if makes sense to me that that's the difference in perspective. And um, this is an average number. I'm sure there are people that and positions that take longer, and maybe people in positions that take less. You know, that are immediately um, performing. But yes, this is the average number, and six months is a long time. Um, for a position, imagine a director of marketing, a director of whatever, and that takes six months to replace, you know, that's um, even five months. I mean, that definitely has an effect on the business. Um, how are companies filling the talent gap? I mean, we asked them, what are you doing? So the 39%, they're saying, well, we focus on hiring replacement full-time employees, regardless of the time it will take us. So. They're very strong about this. There's 39% of saying, hey, listen, we lost somebody, we're gonna find somebody. Okay, we're gonna go out and get a new replacement. We know it's gonna take time, but this is our job, this is what we're doing. Then 37% are saying we promote from within. And then we hire junior employees. And that's a tactic to uh, fill the talent gap, especially if you, you need managers and you have people that can be managers, that's a tactic. And then we support internal mobility. So there are programs in place, companies have 37% to get people moving from one department to another and then filling the gaps. And um, we also see that 34% are saying we contract temp workers or we contract freelancers. Okay, so in all, the, the situation right now is that it takes between five and six months to fill a talent gap. And these are the tactics being used. Okay, overall, 39% are just doing things the way they always did. And then there's a little bit, 37% uh, are practicing mobility and upskilling internally. And another 34, 32% are looking for outside talent that are freelancers and temp workers in a more flexible way of looking at things. Um, what companies should do differently to overcome employee turnover? We asked them, what should we do? And um, it was interesting because I think it was almost wishful thinking in the answers. 40% um, of hiring managers and 44% of um, 
HR leaders were saying, our company should go back to the way things were before COVID. We should be working full time, five days a week, nine to five. On site, anyone leaving should be replaced. So in a way, I feel like everybody's tired and they want, you know, they want things to be the way they were. But realistically speaking, I don't think it's going to happen. And but this is like this is a sentiment. This is how they feel. How should we do things differently? And they're like saying, oh, let's just go back to the way things were. But I don't think that's happening. Like that's 40, 44 percent. The rest are saying, OK, our company should contract freelancers easily and smoothly to fill skilled talent gaps where necessary so that burdens don't fall on the staff that are still in place. Yes, people are saying, let's be open. Let's be flexible. So this is 40% of HR leaders and 32% of hiring managers are saying that. So, you know, they're realizing, hey, we've got to be open to more ideas, to more directions. And another 34% are saying our company should pay higher wages to um, cri critical team members and supplement additional work with freelance talent. They're saying let's combine Let's identify high performers. Let's make sure we take care of them. Let's make sure that they don't go for another opportunity somewhere else. Let's give them the opportunity inside. But then we should also supplement with freelancers because we need to do things quicker, quickly. And a lot of people, very professional people, just became freelancers anyway. Our company should have a more flexible work arrangement, allowing employees and anyone working with the company to work from anywhere. You see that both hiring managers and HR managers are saying, hey, let's be flexible and let people work from anywhere. And our company should allow flexible working hours for anyone working with the company. So it's not only should we allow flexible hours for some people, we should allow it for more types, more types of employees, more professions, and be more flexible in general. Okay, that's what people believe will help overcome turnover. So let me just finalize our major findings and then we'll um, discuss with Sharon about um, how she sees these um, issues that were raised from her eyes and from Fiverr's perspective. Employees in larger organizations are more likely to quit their jobs in order to come, become freelancers. That's an interesting finding. Nearly half of people who quit their jobs are manager director level, leaving teams without leadership. And only a third of survey respondents have programs focused on internal mobility or promotion and are prepared to hire more junior employees. So it's not like everybody's doing everything right now. There's still so much more to do. Final thoughts. Um, HR and hiring managers must, must adjust and align with the market to reduce employee turnover. Both teams, and they work together to rehire. They work together to um, promote, they work together to, to create retention. So we need to work together with HR. Um, everybody is expecting more flexibility and flexibility is so broad. It could be in location, it could be in hours, it could be in contract type. Flexibility needs to be broad. And turnover creates skill gaps and affects productivity and increasing workloads creates burnout and makes people wanna look for another job. So it's a big cycle. We need to create internal mobility programs, and we need to hire freelancers to fill skills gap, to make this time to hire and time to fill much shorter so people can um, start being productive again and not be worried about the turnover that they're, they're going through. So Sharon, I'm gonna ask you directly, as the CHRO of Fiverr, do these report findings surprise you about employees wanting to leave their jobs due to flexibility? Does it make sense to you? Uh, so no, it does not. It doesn't. It, it does make sense. And over the years, uh, more and more people have been wanting more flexibility when it comes to work. I do want to say something uh, to you and to the whole uh, forum. I don't know how many people are here, but uh, listen, we we are uh, we are doing impact. We are the people that are creating the impact of uh, changing the, the way people work. Because uh, as I see it, uh, we are now uh, in the fourth uh, industrial revolution. 
If the first one was uh, making uh, steam from water and power, and the second was uh, the electricity, the third was the electronic and information technology. So now we are lucky enough to be those that are creating the fourth one during the last about 10, 20 years, the digital revolution, um, the, the lines between the physical and the digital world create disruption and challenges uh, that we all know. So getting back to your question, no, I'm not uh, surprised. And um, freelancing uh, continued to grow year over year. It gives people flexibility. They need to do what they love to do and want to do. Uh, mm -hmm. They have the ability to do it. And COVID definitely accelerated this. Um, but but it only accelerated it. it it's already happening. Uh, people are overstaying in one place and overworking. Uh, after going through lockdowns, people wanted to travel. They wanted to visit uh, their loved ones, spend time with their families, uh, and do other things. And they uh, realized that uh, money can't buy happiness and mm -hmm. there's more life, more to do in life than only just to work. And work uh, got more possibilities uh, from being anywhere and um, working remote. So uh, companies are star starting, uh, not starting, continuing to come, uh, the, the companies are coming around to uh, allowing to do it. And uh, we in Fiverr, we really, really uh, feel it because we are also a platform that uh, that helps finding freelancers. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm, I'm not surprised. We are there for a long time already in Fiverr, at least. I guess what what's surprising to the world, I, I agree with you 100%, and, but, but I think what's surprising to the world is that um, it didn't used to be so um, direct. I mean, employees were not so clear about saying this. Like, you know, if I look back before COVID, it didn't even occur to me to come to the office, not to come to the office every day of the week. You know, I, it was right. like the way we worked. And it didn't even occur to me to request that, you know, and um, even though I worked with people overseas and everything. So it's very interesting how people have changed and they say, hey, I'm, I can do it. And I want I want to do things yeah. differently. By the way, I think uh, the the companies changed because uh, the working remote during COVID forced us, and suddenly we saw, hey, we can uh, we can we can work that way. We can uh, acquire companies. Companies went public during COVID. Uh, we hired everybody. Hired people. We we just you know. People are very adjusting. Um, I'm not saying that there's uh, the, the, I think uh, people are social creatures. They need to be with each other. But uh, the, the, we, we saw that we can be flexible. And again, that's why I'm saying that uh, even us in Fiverr, which we promote and we, we are changing the way people work, that's our mission. Uh, we give platform for freelancers and so on. We were surprised how uh, we, with our employees, can work uh, that way. And um, yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't we weren't surprised by the fact that people uh, uh, resign and so on, and we, f we have the solutions within ourselves, but uh, I at least was surprised how easy people adjust to new situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How has Fiverr been impacted with the Great Resignation? Um, I, I'm sure that the platform has grown immensely, that people are signing up because of they became freelancer, but is Fiverr the company? Yeah, so uh, if I'm being completely honest, uh, so of course uh, we were affected and it's difficult to hire, especially in certain areas like product development. I mean, uh, we, we have the same problems and it's very difficult, but uh, for us, it's not different than uh, what happened during the last uh, three, four, five, six years. Um, salary expectations are higher. Uh, that's uh, to be expected, but we, we did not have a mass exodus of employees. 
the way some companies probably have. Um, somehow uh, we, we had the, the good luck of uh, retaining people. And by the way, and I'm, uh, I'm going back to something you said, uh, the good news is that um, promoting people from uh, inside the company, younger people, instead of uh, managers, mid-managers uh, that leave, uh, those new managers, the young ones, or millennials, or even Z generations that are already very ready for the ch change, and our hiring managers are very open to other ideas. And uh, so they, as the hiring managers, they, they are very, um, they, they help us, they HR, and they, they help us lead the change. Um, so one of the ways that we always combated some of our hiring challenges is hiring freelance talent, of course. And, and uh, we really try to practice what we preach for. Uh, there is a lot of uh, experienced talent out there, uh, also on manager and director levels. Uh, at the end of the day, it's like um, people that leave companies, part of them go and open their own businesses. They want to be freelancers. So it's like a circle. People just move from here to there and the talent is there. Um, so they're not necessarily available for full time, so uh, why not bring them as uh, freelancers? And yeah. if uh, if we have an open role that is taking too long to hire for, we bring on a freelancer to help with that role. And uh, a lot of them uh, stay, you know, for projects. And um, by the way, we challenge ourselves on the way we work. Uh, we break roles into you know, projects or uh, create new roles uh, that w we we are trying to be agile as much as we can. Uh, and I, I call, don't have I any... I that flexible thinking. That's very creative. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why do you think um, people are wanting to freelance or more, more or become entrepreneurs? Um, I know I was like watching the number of people signing up to the Fiverr platforms like hundreds of thousands during COVID and um, afterwards, yeah, especially yeah. in the U.S., you know. We why do you think it's yeah, happening? So uh, I think that uh, the, the people want to, to work, uh, the way they want to work is just changed. Um, uh, they want to do something they're more passionate about and they love. Uh, they value flexibility, as you spoke before, uh, over even pay and promotions. And they care about traveling and uh, being able to control their uh, own um, time and place and uh, geography. And uh, they want to spend time with their families, friends. I mean, every, I think every paradigma was challenged during the COVID. And the freelancing allows them to do it. Uh, it gives them freedom to make their own choices, uh, own decisions, how do they want to do or what they don't want to do. Uh, the, the pandemic changed the mindset of uh, the entire generations of uh, Gen Z and uh, the, the millennials also uh, are there. Uh, they're very creative. They're, they have the entrepreneur uh, uh, position and uh, they're very internet savvy. The technology is very, um, very, you know, everything is open. No, and no they can really work from no, anywhere. They really they can, can work. work from, uh, they just need their laptop and the connection to the internet. Uh, it, yes. This is very inspiring for them and uh, it's a good thing. I think uh, I, I want to say something. Okay, so I'm. Uh, I have uh, maybe um, almost uh, 35 years of experience. I worked in uh, HR when it was not called yet HR. It was called even not manpower like long ago from the 80s. And I saw, it, the, the, I saw everything change. But this change, I mean, my children are 30 plus years old and um, it's exciting. I feel that uh, I can be part of the 
providing the, the platform of people that want just to be free and, and control their time and make, uh, make money for their living. I mean, we see it. We see it. We, we have thousands and, and millions of orders and thousands of um, freelancers joining a, a various uh, amount of categories and like everything. Every person has its... Um, talent and this talent can be very uh you know uh, approachable on the platform that mm -hmm. um and you know there's always someone that needs this talent and no globe no geographic limitations nothing you know we can order uh um, um design work or uh, video or programming from someone on the other side of the globe and other content it's exciting. I'm excited. And and I think that we're really high, but we, saw, we saw companies in the last two years that went from having one site to going fully remote. They uh, Companies changed completely um, from one site we have from Europe um, that because they wanted to adjust and um, become a more modern and more flexible and have more flexible working models. And I think that's what you're saying, that they have to adjust to the way what people want now, you know, and it's not going to adjust. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have to adjust. And, and by the way, I think it's uh, healthy for companies because uh, you, you also said uh, that uh, uh, it's about morale and uh, people leave. I think uh, that we should look at in a fresh way, fresh eyes. I mean, we don't have a chance. We we have to just join join it. We can't beat it. So if not, if joining, let's do it. Uh, you know, in a positive way. And uh, and uh, again, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example from exactly from now. So we're looking for a UX writer for quite a while, and um, we found now one. And um, we said, why? Okay. It, this person doesn't have to sit necessarily with the team. And we found now someone in South Africa for three months. And, you know, probably maybe it will exceed to six months and maybe for more. Uh, we see a lot on our platform companies, small businesses and big companies, by the way, that uh, we call it the same buyer, same seller. They begin with a freelancer for a project or a while or so on and uh, and continue. And uh, by the way, um, I know and we are here all HR people uh, that we all have the challenges of misclassifications and how do we do it and uh, old school, uh, you know, the law and, uh, and uh, exposure to misclassification. So there are what we call FMS uh, systems. Uh, Fiverr has acquired a company and we, 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 the, we employ the freelancers either do, through the platform if it's sellers or if it's uh, like 80% role uh, we hired uh, from the FMS system. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, the world is evolving, and it's uh, and there are systems than... to support this flexibility. What you're saying and is there are systems to support happening. this. And yeah. and since it's happening, we can we we just have to jump on this uh, speed uh, car. I don't know how to say it, and uh, just join the ride and be the leaders. The HR are yeah. the leaders of this uh, revolution. That, that's what I think, and it's I, I see it as something so special, really. I don't know a lot of people that can say that uh, they were part of such a um, change in in the world, in, in something so, uh, I mean, everybody is affected from it. So, uh, yeah. I agree. We, we think that this is the amazing period of time for HR leaders to 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 lead, to actually lead the revolution. Um, yeah. But if you do talk about retaining top talent, um, have you done any unique programs or you, can you share anything that you have insights to about how you do um, retain people? Is it before you even know that they're gonna leave or is it 
Um, do they have dialogues with you? How do you how do you go about retaining top talent? Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, we listen. I, I think that, uh, for, you know, uh, every company has its uh, key employees, the 20, 30 percent that you put your, you know, everything on them. And uh, since, uh, again, everything we knew has changed and you can't forecast what people want to do. So I think, first of all, listen and know what they want and uh, give people a clear career path. Show them that they have opportunities to develop and and choose. Now, what I noticed that a lot of them, I think maybe uh, close to 100% of them, of our talent, our employees, they need other uh, things. They, they need to explore different interests and we allow them uh, to, to do uh, their own project, side things, uh, be advisory board members, uh, be advisory in other companies um, and give them the chance to fill their need for, you know, to expand their uh, interests. Um, and their network, and uh, it, it creates them the sense of being f free also to do other things. You know, part of the, the change is that uh, people now work, not, not all of them, but people are going to have two or three jobs at the end of the day. And uh, by the way, we see it, uh, we have um, 40, no, 50 developers in uh, Kiev and Ukraine. Hopefully they're all okay. Uh, some of them uh, we now uh, moved to other countries, but uh, par it's very popular that they work in other places uh, in parallel because they're all freelancers. Uh, so they give us uh, what we need and uh, they work in other places. Uh, and this is the way uh, you retain, You you just, Take the limitations off. If a person give, he, he, he meets his goals and uh, he delivers, so who cares uh, if he doesn't go and compete with uh, another company? I mean, a uh, competitor. He doesn't work with a competitor. I don't mind, and uh, we, we even encourage it. So uh, mm -hmm. other things are being very flexible. We move to a hybrid model. Uh, I do... Not me, but all of us. We we speak a lot with our employees. We people need to meet each other. So uh, if we have an office uh, like in Tel Aviv or in New York or in uh, other places in Phoenix in Orlando, and so we encourage people to come twice a week to the office. You know, people. I said it are social creatures. Uh, we have a lot of remote employees. And uh, we put a uh, budget on traveling. So at least uh, once in a while, if COVID allows it, they can meet. We have uh, 30 uh, freelancers in Guatemala, for example, already for nine years. Now in Guatemala, they live uh, far from each other, uh, like two, three hours drive. So uh, it's years already. Uh, they meet once a month. We, we take a, like an off-site, a place, and they come, and they spend the day together, and it works well. Nobody left eight years, and they're excellent wow. employees. Yeah, so something good happens. No, maybe one or two left. But, uh, so I that's, mean, the, the... that's actually flexibility in practice, you know? <laughs> it's like you're actually doing it. Them. Listen, we, we listen to them. We need to feel the what, what's going on, what what are the needs. Uh, a lot of offsites, and now people are remote, so gathering their. You know, at the end of the day, you you uh, hire more people on remote, so you spend less on. Um, I'm also um, managing the the people operation team, the facilities, procurement. So uh, the other hat is like. The, the offices so you don't have you don't rent offices you take this budget and you put it on travel or many offsites for people that are in the, the same area or um, um, we work um, 
uh, credits or, I mean, just uh, being creative and, again, breaking all the paradigmas. Very, very easy to say, okay, that's what we are used to. Let's go back to, we can't allow it. To ourselves if we if we don't if we can if we don't challenge ourselves all the time and cre- and being creative we will lose and uh it's a pity yeah yeah that's it um i have an opportunity now to talk to you as a chro and ask you um what's the right way for hr and managers to work together to get to keep the because it seems like you know the managers have to deal with their employees with their teams day to day HR creates the the platform the strategy the 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 solutions but it's like we need to work together and um, do you have a unique way that you do it that you work with the directors and with the managers to to get that flexibility and that type of culture to everywhere in Pfizer? So uh, ultimately, HR and managers have the same goal in mind, uh, and it's to keep employees en- engaged and, and, and happy and ensure that they feel supported. Uh, sometimes the end goal can get lost in the mix of things, uh, company goals, uh, individual team goals, uh, individual contributor goals. Uh, but during the time, um, We learn to work together. HR is very involved in the business. Um, there is an open uh, communication between HR and the managers. Um, it, and it's never been more important to be together, the HR and the managers, to be like on the same page uh, with the uh, company's goals. And um, I mean, not, nothing uh, special, I think, because uh, in, in Fiverr, HR was from day one, like, Part of the business uh, we, we go to the business me- uh, stand-up meetings and we are involved we're we're not a big team but uh, each one of the HR uh, um, employees are very connected to all of the managers and, and from one side and the employees from the other side we were I mean our, our managers are so supportive that we don't We don't have any anything special like it's it's that's how we work it's one it's one it's like one person with two heads and uh, mm-hmm. that's it um, not, nothing uh, again we we don't i I wish i I would uh, gain more ideas but uh I don't see too much of a problem I, I mean for you said you you mentioned uh, internal mobility and uh, mm-hmm. you know it's something that you can say uh, managers uh, will be against until there's an employee they don't want him to move to another department but they're very open because at the end of the day you know uh, the managers and they char the, like I said the, the, there's one goal. The success of the company the engagement of the employees so um, mm-hmm. yeah so well, they're willing to uh, give up somebody to to let them develop and get promoted even if it's not on their team that's what you're saying so exactly. you work, yeah. yeah so uh, that's, um, um, so I think you shared with us your um, tips here but I let me see if I understood so you're saying you Your tips for finding and filling the talent gap you're saying you practice what you preach which is you do find freelancers for yeah and you build you break down the roles and you change it to projects and you're very agile and flexible about filling talent gaps and you're willing to do very flexible work arrangements for people from all around the world so I think I get what you're saying and what you're saying is that sometimes you You're not going to fill the exact role you had in mind, but maybe if you break it down to a different way, maybe it's a project, maybe it's three projects instead of a role, then you can find a, a freelancer to fill the gap. And you're also saying there's people at director and manager level out there willing to freelance as well. And um, a lot of, so I a think- lot of them. Yeah. A lot of, the, of, of those, again, those that leave, The mid managers and the directors that leave uh, 
in this uh, period of time, they go and uh, freelance. They just want to work less time, uh, do uh, whatever they want. I mean, uh, pick what projects they want. And this is the talent that leaves the companies and goes on freelancing on the platform and provides the filling the gap. Uh, and I, I want to give you an example from my team. So, uh, you know, probably all the people here uh, know how difficult it is to hire talent acquisition managers. And we usually had talent acquisition managers that uh, were working uh, for a long time and they um, worked with the manager and had uh, sort of... So it's difficult. We, uh, I decided to hire freelancers. So I hired two freelancers, one, and, and I break the whole uh, paradigm of how we worked. So there's one freelancer that works on specific uh, roles and not connected to the manager. So if first of all, the, when, when the talent acquisition manager was a uh, headcount, she was working with the managers. Now the freelancer is working on the roles. So it's different. Uh, we are adjusting, but uh, there are successes, and it's great, and it's easier. And uh, mm -hmm. th that's uh, from the last uh, year, and I'm very happy with this idea. And um, So you're yeah. actually HR as well, in your field, not just in the whole of Fiverr, even in just in the HR field you're doing it. Yeah, in your um, area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, not even mentioning, uh, you know, when uh, there are peaks of uh, suddenly a lot of uh, CVs to screen or so on. I go, I take uh, from Fiverr, a seller, that uh, there are sellers that uh, freelancers that uh, are in the HR field. And I take a project of uh, three months, for example, to screen, to do uh, interviews, uh, phone in. You know, the, we, I'm in Tel Aviv, and if we have a position in uh, California, I take a freelancer that does uh, all the phone interviews for us. How easy can that mm -hmm. be? And it's so pro productive, really. I'm From experience, I recommend to, to take freelancers okay. for products. Yeah. Okay. So I guess my last question is... Um this big word called productivity. And you said before that um, actually we proved to the world, all of us together as employees, freelancers, whoever we were during this pandemic and during this revolution, <laughs> that we can be very productive. Like you said, we, we, we went through IPOs, we, we bought companies, we, we built new products, we did everything in the last two years, nothing stopped. And um, right. maybe traveling and having fun. Um, um, so my question is, what practices um, do you think will help us um, deal with this productivity and make it even better? Or, or do you feel that we are productive, you know, and, um, you know, maybe the flexibility creates productivity. Maybe work-life balance helps productivity. I wonder what your take on this as an HR person. Um, so first of all, we can always improve. <laughs> I'm a person that uh, I, I personally, I, I always look to improve. And even you say, maybe we are, maybe, uh, maybe we can be more productive. Um, but, uh, again, first of all, really the flexibility, the hybrid model, they, they really, I think that it, uh, raised, uh, it exceeded the productivity even for myself, I, I see how easy it. I mean, again, people need to to manage their uh, life balance because it's very easy to get and find yourself after 16 hours uh, of uh, meetings on the Zoom. But uh, at the end of the day, yeah, if you go uh, once, twice a week to the office and uh, three days you're from home or vice versa, it helps for the productivity. Um, but I think the magic word for for me and for us, and this is something that is one of our core values, is just making things simple. Just making it simple, not overthinking too much, not 
making things very complicated, just, you know, flowing with a stream. How do you say? And, um, yeah. and, 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 and not taking the problem and just making it simple. And this is a value. And by the way, Fiverr is all about uh, making things simple. It's like, you know, you take a digital service and you productize it to be very simple. How do you, how, how can you, uh, you buy music or something on a platform? That's uh, our core value. And we, again, we preach it also in, in the HR. Don't overcomplicate. People need something. Again, be loose. Let them, give mm -hmm. them the freedom. If they're good people and 99.9% .9 of employees are good employees, they will deliver and they will meet their goals. And uh, don't make it complicated. That's my... Uh, I love that. Yes, it makes sense. And I think people have proven themselves. I agree that um, and um, and what you're saying um, corresponds with flexibility, it corresponds with um, openness and agility and all those things you mentioned before. And listen, so I think listen we're at the to top of the hour. Yeah. I think we're at the top of the hour. And I think I answered everybody's questions from the Q&A. And I'm also, I want to thank you so much for joining me. And it was a Thank pleasure you. doing this research and learning about the Great Resignation from that perspective. And it was a um, pleasure doing this with you, Zoe. We Fiverr and uh, Bob, hi, Bob is uh, have a long history. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yes, and uh, I think um, we're inventing the world of work together, <laughs> the new world of work. Yes, and we love it. Yeah, Thank true. you. We have Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.